here he comes, here he comes, then the trumpets and the drums, here he comes, on the long saddle tired having been constantly on the move for three days. No rest for me nor for my partner and the horses. The trail had been long and weary, but I knew that Red and I were nearing the end of our destination when we rode into the windy and dusty Mexican village of San Pablo. We were after a killer, Sam Chapman, who had fled across the border after swindling and shooting a friend of ours. We'd never seen Chapman. All we knew was his name and that he had a peculiar crescent-shaped scar on his right cheek. The trail had been hot and cold, but our break came when a sheep herder told us of seeing an Americana with such a scar in San Pablo. I stopped a Mexican, told him I was a U.S. Marshal, and asked where we could find Chapman. But when I described the scar, he looked at me sort of frightened and then scurried away. The same thing happened when I asked a woman. And then again, when I questioned the boy. What do you make of this, Harvey? Huh? You think we had to sever your itch? Well, if you don't quit scratching, I'll think we have. Go over here to the cantina. Maybe there's somebody in there that isn't afraid to talk. What is your pleasure? A little information, if you don't mind. Then you have come to the right place. I, Jose, am the best informed man in all San Pablo. Yeah? Maybe you can tell us where we can find Sam Chapman. Chapman? An Americano? That's right. He has a scar on his face. It's shaped like this. We want to have a talk with him. There is no such man in San Pablo, senor. Wait a minute. Are you sure? Seguro que si, I am sure. Now go back to your country where you belong. Hey, who do you think you're talking? Take it easy, Red. Look out! Now look what you've done. But oh, Harvey, this... Wait a minute. We didn't come here looking for trouble. I'm sorry for what's happened. It is too late to be sorry, senor. You have to shoot, just wing them. Paren esto, immediately. Me oyen? Since when do the men of San Pablo act like ill-bred savages? Put away your knife and go. Thank you, senorita. Who are you men? I'm Hopalong Cassidy, a U.S. Marshal. This is Brett Connors, my deputy. You are looking for a man with a scar on his face. Why? Because he's a killer. That's not true. He... Yes? I think you better have a talk with my father. Don Miguel Alvarez, the wealthiest man in San Pablo and Lola's father, admitted knowing an American with a crescent-shaped scar on his right cheek. But his name wasn't Chapman. It was Forrester, Jim Forrester. True, Senor Cassidy. It is true that he's also wanted by the American authorities. Also my foot. He's the man we're after. No, no, Senor. Of that I'm certain. Sit down, please. Thank you. Senor Forrester first came to San Pablo about two months ago. He was found on the street, exhausted and feverish. He was delirious, and he talked about being a wanted man. Everyone in San Pablo knows this. But as he recovered his health, the people took him to their hearts. 
Not only do they come to him with their troubles, but already, through his knowledge of medicine, he has saved the lives of many. Then he's a doctor? Not exactly. But now you can understand why the people acted like they did. They would give their very lives for him. He's quite a man. Yet he's wanted by the law. Why? I think he should tell you that himself. I'll send for him. You'll excuse me, please. Surely. I did my best for the patient, but he died. They accused me of malpractice. I hadn't yet received my doctor's degree. And so they issued a warrant for my arrest. And then I fled across the border. It's not a very nice picture, is it, gentlemen? Señor Forrester, Señor Forrester, el niño está muy malo. Venga pronto, por favor. Sí, sí, no tenga miedo. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm going with you. Her little son was taken suddenly ill. Oh, I see. Well, senor, are you convinced he's not the man you seek? Ah, it looks that way. Well, it's been a pleasure. The pleasure is mine. But you mustn't think of leaving yet. There will be a fiesta the day after tomorrow when we honor the patron saint of San Pablo. You stay as my guest and join in the celebration. A fiesta? So we could do it with a little fun. I guess we could at that, Red. Thank you very much. Then come. I'll show you where to stay with your horses. I hadn't planned on leaving San Pablo yet, and Don Miguel's invitation fitted in nicely with what I had in mind, to check up a little further on the man who called himself Forrester. Maybe he was Forrester. Maybe it was coincidental that he and Chapman had identical scars. Maybe. But I wasn't sold. And what happened the next day while Red and I were riding to town convinced me that I wasn't just daydreaming. to suspect the two riders heading up the road. They waved a friendly hand as they passed us. But something in the way they averted their heads caused me to glance back at them. they weren't Mexicans? Yeah. What do you make of it? I think Chapman sent them out here to get rid of us. Chapman? Yeah, or maybe I should say Forrester. Forrester? Well, that doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't on the face of it. Well, well if Forrester's Chapman, what's he doing in San Pablo? He's got a reason. I'm just as sure of that as I am that he's our man. Come on, let's go. The streets of San Pablo were transformed into scenes of rejoicing and celebrating, all in honor of their patron saint. Soon they would be dancing, singing, and playing their instruments as if it would be their last chance of a lifetime. Red had never seen anything like this.
Many came from outer communities. All work stopped. The poor revelers mixed with the townspeople in the marketplace. Don Miguel told me no fiesta would be complete without contest for the young men. Skilled horsemen pitting their skill and muscles against the bulls. A contestant had to rope the animal by its feet and then ride it. From the untamed mountain regions came the various bands. Each had their own way of paying homage to the patron saint. Their dances were handed down over the years. The weird turns and jumps hadn't changed. Only the meaning was different. Now they were no longer worshiping a sun god, fire, a tree, or a rock. and roping contest, Don Miguel arranged to give the best dancers cash prizes. Everyone seemed determined to win first money. were not interested in prizes. They swayed back and forth in rhythm with the music, giving out messages and a meaning for their people. A message of prayers and hopes for good crops in the coming year, just as it had been in the past. Don Miguel's hacienda was alive with friends. His party was the climax of the first day's festivities. The following morning, all the excitement had left the hacienda. Servants, children, and guests went into town for the religious procession. Then one of the servants told us Don Miguel wanted to show us something in the family shrine. The shrine was a small windless room with thick walls and a bolted door. I can't explain it, but as I looked around, I felt a sudden sense of peace. And I could see that Red, too, was affected by the same feeling.
includes an image of a patron saint carved from a solid piece of emerald. It has been in the family for centuries. It is believed to have strange powers. Strange powers? Yes, of healing the mind. And it's recorded in our family Bible that two men and a woman saw it come to life. Happened in Spain many years ago. Gee, Josephat, that must be worth millions. It's priceless, my friend. A sacred heirloom. Only once a year is this shrine entered to remove the image so it can play its part in the fiesta processional. A bell suddenly rang in my head and I knew why the man who called himself Forrester had remained in San Pablo. He had heard of the Emerald Saint and the door that was opened only once a year. But before I could say anything... Don't move. Anyone. What's the meaning of this in your Forrester? His name isn't Forrester, it's Chapman. And he's after this Emerald Saint. You're right, Cassidy. I'm sorry, my friends, but I've waited a long time for this day. Surely you don't think I've hung around this boring town because I liked it, or just a doctor, you're poor. No, don't. Don't take the image, I beg you. If it's money you want, I'll give you 50,000 pesos. I promise. You're very generous, Don Miguel. But I think this image, when cut up, will bring close to a half a million dollars. You would cut it up? Desecrate our patron saint? I'm sorry, senorita, but I cannot afford to be sentimental. You will be punished for this, swifter than you think. I warn I you. I have been warned before, senorita. And now, with your very kind permission, my friends and I will leave you. You'll never open it. There's a heavy bolt on the outside. Well, we can try it. Step back, please. Way back. not far from the hacienda. Trailing him this time wasn't so easy because he knew he would follow. He tried every trick in the book. He ducked back across the border. In a way, I was glad of that, for on our soil, I had full authority. We spotted their horses near a cabin. Chapman. It 
would seem that I underestimated you, Cassidy. How did you get out? Where's your other friend? Don't turn around. Well, well. The tables are turned again. Tie them up. Taking the image back to Don Miguel. You're doing what? Taking it back. And leave Wilkes and me empty handed? Not on your life. You promised an equal split when you sent for us, and I'm going to get mine if Why don't you be quiet? You annoy me. I forgot about Cassidy and his pal. Go back in there and finish him. returned the Emerald Saint to Don Miguel, handed over our prisoners to the nearest sheriff, and we were now heading back home. But as we rode along, I couldn't help wondering what it was that Chapman saw and heard. Hi there, little partners. I think you know your mummy is the nicest and the most beautiful woman in the world, and that she loves you very dearly. So when she asks you to do anything, don't fuss about it. Just do it. For instance, when she asks you to have a glass of milk, drink it. And then surprise her by asking for another one. You try that and see how much better you both feel. Now, until next week, so long. And in the meantime, watch yourself at the crosswalks, will you? Cassidy, he'll return soon again. There's 
Little used to say goodbye until then. Hop along, cat.